Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part three in my fountain series. And in this video, we're going to go ahead and continue working on the fountain and refining it and working a little bit on the background behind it as well. If you want to follow along with traditional materials, Check out part one in this series where I have a list of all the paint and brushes and the canvas that I use. The app that we're going to be using is Infinite Painter for Android. And we're going to go ahead and continue working on the basin of the fountain. And here I'm just using the straight edge guide in Infinite Painter to kind of get the um, top of the basin and also it's got little flat sections on the bottom there and so I'm using it um, the line tool to straighten those out as well and again I'm using light and dark grays because um, we want sort of a, a weathered look to the fountain and then I wanted to go ahead and work a little bit more on the uh, fence in the background there and, and just kind of refine the Spanish tiles that are on the back of the fence or the wall. I guess it's sort of a, it's a cement wall is what it is. And then I just want to go ahead and add some lighter color to it, but don't kill all the darker color that's underneath it. Kind of let that shine through just a little bit because we want it to look also a little bit textured and like it has stucco on it because this is sort of a, a Spanish adobe look. And so I'm using um, lighter grays with this. And if you're following traditionally, you can use ultramarine blue, doxazine purple, and some burnt umber and add white acrylic gesso and just kind of make different shades of that mixture. Um, and we don't want bright, bright whites right now. We're just trying to uh, still kind of do some of the medium tones. And then I'm adding some grass around the base of the wall and also around the fountain basin. And you can use your Pollock brush and Infinite Painter for that, or you can use a, a bristle brush or a filbert brush if you're following along traditionally. And then I wanted to go ahead and add some more uh, white to the edge of the basin where it's catching the light on the left side there. And just kind of smudging it out a little bit and letting... The grayish tones and sort of the uh, paint strokes shine through there. We don't want to get rid of all the paint strokes because it, it gives it sort of a, a marble-like texture or a concrete-like texture. And I'm just kind of using some of the Legacy brushes here. I like the Thoreau brush for um, some of the detail work. And again, I'm working on the sort of the design of the basin on the fountain here and then I'm working a little bit more on the edge you want the edge to be rounded and then I had a bit of a crash um, I'm using the beta version of infinite painter and we had a little bit of a crash and so I went ahead and used the last stage that I've saved and imported it back in and like I said before it's very important to do that you you need to save each step if you can possibly because no matter how stable your program is something will happen so you need to make sure that you save constantly all the time and I'm just kind of working on the edge of the basin again and adding the shadow underneath the lip of the edge of the basin and I'm using a darker gray against the medium and lighter gray tones and so I want to go ahead and, and also smooth the edges down on it and make it look um, even make sure that we don't have one side longer than the other for the fountain because it, it's a 
a symmetrical um, built fountain. And you can also make a broken line go over the shadow color and that just gives it more of texture and more of a realistic look. You don't want a straight sharp line. You, you want a broken line so that it looks textured like concrete. And then I'm working on the tree behind the fountain and adding a little bit of a lighter gray highlight to the branches. And then I wanted to add a little bit more foliage there and add some different colors to it. A little more of an olive green and add a little bit of um, some of the twigs that are also in the background on the right side. There's a little bush and and then I wanted to add some more uh, foliage against the wall with that olive color. And you can use the Pollock brush for this and in Infinite Painter it works. It's one of my favorite brushes. Or you can use the bristle brush. So this is the end of part three in my fountain series. And in part four we're going to go ahead and finish up the picture and add all the final details in the water into the fountain. So if you want to see that, hit the subscribe button. And thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below, and I will catch you later.